Hey, everyone. Welcome back to my channel Mohammed Mamaris. Today, we're delving into the fascinating and controversial life of Fritz Haber, a German chemist whose contributions to science and industry shaped the course of history. Before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss our deep dives into the stories that shaped our world. Fritz Haber, born in 1868, was a trailblazing chemist who left an indelible mark on both the scientific community and the darker realms of human history. In 1918, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his groundbreaking invention of the Haber-Bosch process. This method allowed for the large-scale synthesis of ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen gases, revolutionizing the production of fertilizers and explosives. The significance of the Haber-Bosch process can't be overstated. Approximately one-third of the world's annual food production relies on ammonia synthesized through this process. This means that nearly half of the global population benefits from the agricultural advancements made possible by Haber's ingenuity. But Haber's contributions didn't stop there. Teaming up with Max Born, he proposed the Born-Haber cycle, a method for evaluating the lattice energy of an ionic solid. These scientific endeavors earned him the reputation as one of the most important scientists and industrial chemists in human history. However, Haber's legacy is shrouded in controversy, especially due to his involvement in the development of chemical weapons during World War I. A known German nationalist, he is often referred to as the father of chemical warfare. Haber played a pivotal role in the weaponization of chlorine and other poisonous gases, proposing the use of chlorine gas during the Second Battle of Ypres to break the trench deadlock. Perhaps the most disturbing twist in Haber's story comes after his death. His pioneering work in chemical warfare was later used, albeit without his direct involvement, to create Zyklon B. This deadly gas was infamously employed in the gas chambers of the Holocaust, leading to the extermination of over one million Jews. As the Nazi regime rose to power in 1933, Fritz Haber, a Jew himself, was forced to resign from his positions. Already in poor health, he sought refuge in various countries. It was during this turbulent time that Heim Weizmann, a fellow chemist and future president of Israel, invited Haber to become the director of the Seif Research Institute in Rehovot, Mandatory Palestine. Despite accepting the offer, Fritz Haber's journey took a tragic turn. On January 29, 1934, while en route to his new position, he passed away in a Basel hotel at the age of 65. His death was attributed to heart failure, marking the end of a complex and controversial scientific career. Fritz Haber's story is a testament to the duality of scientific achievement, how one man's groundbreaking contributions to agriculture and chemistry can be overshadowed by the devastating applications of his work in the context of war and genocide. As we reflect on history, it's crucial to learn from the past and strive for a future where science is harnessed for the betterment of humanity. If you found this video enlightening, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow history enthusiasts. We'll be back with more intriguing stories that shaped our world. Until then, stay curious, stay informed, and keep exploring the stories that matter. The Nobel Prize Awards explain simply. Meet Swedish inventor Alfred Nobel. He's known for inventing dynamite, a breakthrough in chemistry. However, having mostly invented explosives, he worried about how people would remember him. So when he died, he left most of his wealth in a trust to fund what would later be known as the Nobel Prizes. These prizes are a set of annual international awards given for landmark achievements or discoveries made during the preceding year. They are widely regarded as the most prestigious honors in the fields of literature, medicine, physics, chemistry, peace, and economics. A separate committee awards each prize, but the processes are similar. About 3,000 people, usually academics, have the right to nominate candidates. From these, the Nobel committees choose around 300 potential recipients and prepare a report reflecting the advice of experts. 
the prize awarding institutions then select the laureates by a majority vote. Each winner receives a gold medal, a diploma, and a sum of money. There is a maximum of three laureates per award, except for the Peace Prize, which can be awarded to institutions. You surely know some of the most famous laureates. Ernest Hemingway won for writing The Old Man and the Sea. What would humanity look like without Alexander Fleming, who discovered penicillin? Albert Einstein won for discovering the law of the photoelectric effect. Martin Luther King Jr. showed the Western world that struggle can be won without violence. The only person to win two Nobel Prizes in different fields is Marie Curie, one for her work on radiation and another discovering radium and polonium. And the Red Cross won a record three Nobel Prizes, mostly for their work protecting the rights of prisoners of war. These are the Nobel Prizes. Make a positive impact and get yours.